Over the last five years, you've been hearing rumors that one of those foods that is typically viewed as bad for you, i.e. chocolate, actually belongs on the front page with other nutrient-supplying foods which have a number of benefits. Interestingly, this is not a new concept. Indeed, back in Mayan times, it was viewed that chocolate was an important part of everyday life, particularly for nobility. But it was more than something that just tasted good. It was thought that this particular food product could help to facilitate conception, delivery, digestion, and perhaps most importantly, as indicated in the last sentence, it reduced infectious diseases. And consistent with what people are now talking about with dietary flavanols and cardiovascular disease, it was thought over 500 years ago that chocolate might be a way to relieve heart palpitations and improve blood flow. One of the reasons that we study cocoa and chocolate particularly is up to 10% of cocoa powder can be these dietary flavanols. The other reason we like to study this is subject compliance is often quite good. So let's ask the first question. Do we absorb these compounds from a typical food? In this type of study, we can take healthy human adults. We ask them to refrain from eating flavanol-rich foods overnight. They fast, and then they come in and we give them, it could be a cocoa beverage in our case, or perhaps a chocolate product, and then we collect blood over a period of 12 hours. In this graph, two very important concepts are demonstrated. First, you'll note at baseline, that is in the morning prior to when they received any of these foods, there's no detectable concentrations of any of the flavanols, catechin or epicatechin, or the dimer, which is a procyanidin, in a person's blood. However, within two hours after consuming a meal that's rich in these compounds, you see high concentrations in the blood. By six hours, these again have become vanishingly small. The other important observation is that the absolute concentration of the epicatechin, the catechin, and the dimer differ by factors of 10. So what this tells us is that in normal individuals, these compounds are rapidly absorbed, but they're rapidly cleared from the body. But it also shows that different flavanols have different levels of absorption. Therefore, we should not view them as all being the same. Are these doing something good for the body, though? Recent data would suggest that they do indeed. One of the properties of flavanols is they can act like antioxidants, similar to vitamin C and vitamin E. And as is depicted in this slide, if you have a high flavanol diet for a period as short as two weeks, you can significantly reduce the ability of your lipoproteins to be oxidized in blood. Since we think oxidized LDL is a common cause of the initiation of cardiovascular disease, this is viewed as a health benefit. It turns out that these compounds are capable of increasing the production of nitric oxide in the blood. Nitric oxide was defined as the molecule of the year several years ago, and it is the compound that is at the heart of how Viagra works. So to some extent, one can almost view flavanols as a form of natural Viagra.